Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. Big question, why do your mixes fall flat? You listen to your mix, then you listen to a mix from your favorite album, and that one has all this energy and punch and hugeness, and yours is just kind of meh. What's the difference? Well, I'm going to talk about one huge difference and one change you can make that will start to address this problem right away in this video. Okay, so let's assume you, a lot of you are going to say, oh, he's going to say, get it right at the source. I just know it. Actually, I'm not. Um, let's assume that you did get it right at the source, that you recorded, let's say it's a regular kind of full band production rock thing. Drums recorded and mixed well. Bass, solid. Guitars recorded and mixed well. Vocal recorded and mixed well. But there's still something missing. What is it? What's the difference between your mix and their mix? What did they have that you don't? Well, it could be, obviously, there could be many answers to this question, but one big one, I think, you know what? Let me demonstrate it first and see if you can hear the difference, and then we'll talk about what that difference is. So I've put together two versions of the same song, uh, option one and option two, and I'm zoomed way in so that you can't see what's happening and the difference between them. But we'll start with option one, play it all the way through. This is the uh, coming out of the bridge into the final chorus of one of my songs. And then I'll play you option two, same section, same song, but what's different? And go ahead and leave your comment as you're listening as to what you think is different, and then we'll talk about the differences uh, moving forward. Back up and fight and get back up and fight and get back up and fight. This is one of those times where I wish you were sitting here with me and we could just talk about it, but we don't get the back and forth like I wish we did, but let's talk about it anyway. Um, so these are both the same song, same performance. Everything you heard in option one, you also heard in option two, but obviously there were differences. Before I talk about what those differences are, let me play it one more time, but I'll flip back and forth between the two. So you'll see whichever one is highlighted is the one that we're listening to, um, and you'll hear as I flip back and forth, you should hear some more significant differences. Here we go. First, let's talk about what's happening in the first option. In option one, what do we hear? Well, let's analyze it. Let's listen and say what we hear. We hear drums and bass, we hear a pair of electric guitars, and we hear vocal. And that's all we hear. There's some reverb and it's been mixed. Um, but nothing changed in the mix between option one and option two. What changed is the instruments that were playing. So option one was what a lot of people consider their final version of the song. They've got drums, bass, left guitar, right guitar, uh, there's an acoustic guitar in the middle, you can't really hear it very well. Um, and a lead vocal, and then it's mixed really well. Guitars might be a little bit bright. 
But uh, otherwise, that's that's it. And so that's the kind of the raw starting point for the mix. And they'll be confused as to why doesn't it, why can't I get it sound any bigger? And they look for different plugins and different mixing techniques and parallel processing and side chaining and all these other things to make it more interesting when the problem isn't a mixing problem and the problem isn't a recording problem. Do you know what the problem is? It's a production problem. Meaning this version, option one, has not been produced yet. It's just the starting point. It's got drum space, two guitars, and a vocal. That's great. And some styles of music, maybe that's it. But for me and for a lot of the music that I listen to, that's that's kind of the starting point. That's the skeleton of the production. Then we start to add the parts that make it interesting and engaging. Let me show you what I added to that foundation to make it interesting and engaging. So the way I'll show that to you is I'm going to play you all the parts that are missing. All the parts that you didn't get to hear uh, in option one. And that is this one, this one, this one. So all of these things are what was missing from option two, or from option one. These are the things that were added in option two. So the problem with option one, let's actually save this as option one minus two minus one. I don't even know what to call that. Uh, the problem with option one was we have this. We have just cool drums and bass, but then the guitars are just strum and chords. It's just jangan, 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 Nothing wrong with that, but by itself, it's kind of boring. Life is one big disappointment. It's fine, but it's just not that interesting. And it's going to keep repeating for the next, you know, whatever, 16, 32 bars. And we're going to get bored with it. Um, but by adding these other things that we added in, I, I was able to make this a lot more interesting, at least to me. So what did we add in? Well, the first thing we added in, there's a loop. So on top of the drums, there's this loop that's just kind of a combination of beatbox and the drummer hitting his sticks on the side of the kit that we recorded with the room mic. That is, isn't as prominent in this section of the song, but in the verses, it gives it kind of an extra depth to it. Another big part is the two electric guitar parts. So the we had the original two that are just going, but we had two more, and these are a little bit cleaner and a little bit simpler. The one on the left is just playing out some chords, just strumming them out like a like diamond style, just playing whole notes at a time. And the right one is sort of a melodic, sort of a lead part. Very simple, but it adds kind of some warmth, some mid-range, and something a little bit different from just those driving guitars that's a little cooler. What else happens here? Uh, one of the big ones is these background vocals that come in. This is a loop that I recorded of me singing that main little melodic part ah, with some harmonies on top, um, and it just it adds another element to this that fills out the mid-range a little bit and also just makes it a little more interesting and engaging. And the final piece was probably the most obvious was this echo part, which is echoing the lyric that I was singing in the bridge, but it's now echoed as like a background part in the chorus. So these are what the final combination of everything that I added was. Okay, so let's listen again. Here's the f first option. And here's option two with everything in. So here's the takeaway. When you're thinking about adding things into your mix, there's really kind of two or three things you can think about. First of all, do I have stuff in the left, middle, and right buckets? Are there things, interesting things happening left, left mix, middle mix, and right mix? Next thing is, are, are there different instruments taking up different frequency ranges? Is there anything kind of giving us a mid-range? 
Or do we need to add something warm in there to do some balance there? It's not an EQ thing, it's there's no real parts that warm up that middle, kind of like those electric guitars and those background vocals did. Uh, and third, can we add something melodic? Our ears are trained just like as humans, we love a good story. There's something about it's just baked into us. We love a good story. It's also baked into us that we our ears are trained to listen for melody. So anytime you can add something melodic into your tunes, it's going to make it a little more listenable and a little more what I call hummable, where I could walk away humming that guitar part. <laughs> now that happens to be almost the same thing that the lead vocal is singing, but it's done in a different way with a different timbre. It makes it interesting and it really fills out the mix. Now, I'm not telling you to go just add a bunch of tracks to your songs and because Joe Gilder said I need to add more. It's not so much a matter of more as it is a matter of adding enough. If you just have drums, bass, and two guitars for a punk song, for you know a Nirvana cover band, that might be perfect. But for a lot of songs, the difference between what you're hearing on your mix and what you're hearing on the radio or on your favorite albums is they've been produced a little bit more. They've added some extra things to make it more interesting. They've maybe doubled that lead vocal. They've added two more guitars instead of just the two that you had. Um, they've added some extra percussion that you don't have in yours. There's all sorts of things it could be. It's, I'm not telling you to carbon copy what I did in this song, but take the idea behind it and find holes in your mix that you can fill with interesting parts. It can be really simple stuff that added up adds up to something really beautiful and even complicated sounding, but beautiful. It doesn't have to be virtuoso parts to be interesting and engaging and melodic and cool. Um, so think about places in your mix where maybe you're saying, I'm done recording, but the answer is, no, 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 you've, you've got the foundation, now let's have another session where we record extra stuff. Those are my favorite sessions to do where I'll put in a little piano pad on one section and then a little simple guitar part that's like, but it fits in with the song. And then maybe I get out my shaker and my tambourine and do just a really simple shaker or tambourine part that adds a lot. Or I do a single tambourine hit and I add a bunch of reverb to it so it goes... Or I do I put in a cymbal swell that's that makes that transition sound so much better. It's sometimes really small little things like that that make all the difference in the world. What production tips do you have? Leave them in the comment. Let us know. I'd love to hear some more ways that you add interest and make take your songs from being just maybe some musicians all playing the same chords and rhythms to something that is more than that. Final thing I forgot to mention, just as much as we love rhythm, we also love, I'm sorry, just as much as we love melody, we also love differences in rhythm. So if every guitar player, all the guitar players and the bass player are all playing the same rhythm, maybe think about introducing something different. For example, that left guitar, instead of going, it goes, Bring, bring, bring. Instead of playing eighth notes, it's playing whole notes. And then the one on the right, instead of playing eighth notes, is going bling, da, da, de, 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 de. So it's a different rhythm than the other guitars. It's also a different tone, tonality. It's more melodic than the other guitars are. And all of that combined together makes something kind of cool and magical. You just have to play around with it, but have these ideas in mind when you're doing it, and it'll give you some at least kind of prompt you in the right direction of where you should go. As always, if you like this, be sure to like, subscribe, do all of those things. And if you want my recording cheat sheet, which talks about a lot of this and a lot more, you can get that for free at recordingcheatsheet.com. Thanks for watching. See you next week.